So my dear friend Nippon sat down with me and told me a story that stopped my heart. Um, it's a story from far away, a cold winter night um, in New York. And Julio is walking down a, a deserted street. A night like any other, he's going to the local diner. And he walks down, it's bitter cold. And he sees a teenager hooded walking towards him. And the teenager pulls out a knife and says, give me your wallet. And so Julio does what I think I would have done. He takes out his wallet and gives it to the teenager. And the teenager turns around and walks off. And then Julio does what I wouldn't have done. He says, wait a minute. And so the teenager turns around and says, what? And Julio says, it's a really, really cold winter night. If you're planning to be out robbing people all night, why don't you take my coat? And so he takes the coat and he walks off and Julio turns to go and then he turns around again and he says, wait a minute, come back. And the teenager turns back again and he says, I was just on my way to have dinner at the local diner. Why don't you come with me? So Julio and the teenager go and they sit down in the diner and they have a two hour long dinner and they talk about his life and his struggles. And Julio knows everybody in the restaurant and he greets everyone and he's nice to everyone. And the teenager turns to him and says, Julio, why are you so nice to everybody? And the teenager says, I don't understand. And Julio says, I'm nice to everybody because that's what my parents taught me. Didn't anyone ever tell you be nice? And the teenager looks at him and says, yes, people said that, but I never saw people be nice. And at the end of the dinner, Julio looks at him and says, you know, I would love to buy you this dinner, but you have my wallet. And so the teenager smiles and he takes out the wallet and he gives it back to Julio. And Julio takes out $20 and says, you're probably going to need this money more than me. And what does it mean, I think? for Julio to have cultivated over years the kind of love and compassion in him to be able to do that. What does it take to be like Julio? And so my work and, and our work at Teach for India is about saying, how do we cultivate in children the compassion to be like Julio? The compassion, enough compassion to really change the world. And I want to tell you today um, a story of, of one of our children who came into my life about three and a half, four years ago when we were rehearsing a big musical called Maya. And her name was Priyanka. She came from a small uh, slum community, lived in a small one bedroom house in Pune and came from a very, very disturbed background, father in jail, single mother, uh, no siblings. Um, had, had studied in a school where she hadn't, to that date, got a very good education. We went um, in Mumbai to, to visit an old age home with our children. And this was a particularly difficult old age home because all the elderly people there were amputees. And so for our children, they were scared. And they were elderly people. Many of them didn't have an arm, didn't have legs. And we told our children, just go and sit with any of the aunties or uncles here and talk to them and show them love and then come back and let's talk about it. And so Priyanka went and she sat with this lady and I was walking past them and I realized that she and the lady had no language in common. But Priyanka sat there for 90 minutes and they looked like they were talking, they were smiling, they were laughing. And at the end she came back and I said, Priyanka, what were you talking about? You didn't even have the same language. And Priyanka said, Didi, she was 14 years old, I wanted to push myself to see whether we can actually connect at a deeper level without language. And I thought that's an incredible reflection for a, a young 14-year-old child. Fast forward three months later, we went back to the same old age home. And this time, Priyanka bought a bar of chocolate because she wanted to give the chocolate to this old lady. 
And we came in and she was very excited. She saw Krishna auntie, she ran to Krishna auntie. She had the bar of chocolate in one hand and in her other hand, she had a teddy bear. And this teddy bear was very important to her because with all the insecurity in her life, she always kept this teddy bear with her. And she went there, she's holding the teddy bear, she's holding the bar of chocolate and she gives the bar of chocolate and then Krishna auntie looks at her and puts her hands out and says, give me the teddy bear. She thought the teddy bear was for her. And so this child stops for a minute, 14 years old. This is her sense of security. She could easily have explained, no, it's my teddy bear. She hesitates for a minute and then she gives her the teddy bear. And then she comes back and she says, Didi, she says, I want to tell you what happened and she tells me all of this and I say, Priyanka, how beautiful. I mean, you've embodied courage, compassion, wisdom, all the things that we've been trying to build together. And she says, no, Didi, you don't understand. She said, if I really understood compassion, I would not have hesitated. I would have given her the teddy bear right away from my heart without hesitating. And I thought about that, 14 year old girl is able to do that. And I thought about that at scale. You think about 300 million children in our country. If we are able to truly give them, not just the grades to pass their exams and go to college and get a job and make money so that their children can pass exams, but the values, the courage, the compassion, the wisdom, to really understand themselves, their purpose in the world. How incredible could that be? And so Priyanka's story goes on and, and through her, her time at Teach for India um, and her starring in this big musical called Maya, uh, she applies to the United World College, one of the, the top schools in Italy. She gets a full scholarship. And so today she's studying in Italy, she's learning skiing, she's learning tennis, uh, she's teaching Bollywood dance to uh, the kids in Italy. But the incredible part of the story is she's been there for a year and she just finished her summer holidays and she came back um, to India, but she came back with 11 of her friends from UWC who'd never been to India before, Japanese girl, English girl, American girl, and they came and they lived in her home and they spent two and a half weeks serving in some of our schools and, and running a community project. And then you think that the most important part of this story is that she is paying it forward and that she is giving and that she wants children to grow in their courage, compassion and wisdom. And she wants all the children that she touches to be able to say, I'm not just here for myself. I'm here to really change the world and to make the world better. Um, and so our, our hope is that one day in this country, we are led by our children, that we give them the power to lead. We put them at the front. We listen to their voices. And we don't say the kids are the future because children are not the future. Young people are not the future. Young people are the present. And so Priyanka um, helps me to remember what I really want to share with all of you. Be remembered for good.